Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapski, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is a series of videos that show you how to save money on the wargaming hobby, and this is a painting tutorial showing you how to save over $160 putting up some uh, Blood Warriors of Corn. Not only that, but we're also using a Blood Secrator as well as a Mighty Lord of Corn as well as a Skull Grinder. All four miniature types that you can find for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, uh, we're going to use exactly the same techniques for all of them so that way you can see exactly how they painted up and this is what the end result will look like for this army i decided to kind of go with a black color scheme for the blood warriors for uh, age of sigmar and the reason why is because you really don't get to see black uh, color schemes being used for armor all that much in corn armies and i thought it'd be kind of a nice little change to make it look really interesting and also to make it look really eye-catching on the battlefield as well so we're going to of course show you two different methods of how to paint this up we're going to show you the cheapskate method first so that way you can see how cheaply we can paint up this army this uh, unit as well as how quickly you can paint it up as well at the same time we'll also compare the price point of the cheapskate method versus the name brand paints using citadel as well as army painter i'm going to show you exactly the cost difference in fact we'll be just spoiler now we're going to be saving you over 160 dollars on the savings on that one so that being said ladies and gentlemen let's get this video on a roll and show you guys how to paint up some blood warriors of corn all right, first of all, for steps one and two, you're gonna use spray paint for the most part for these first two steps. One to prime, and secondly, another one to base coat. And if you notice, these guys are kind of already painted already with the flesh tone. And the reason why is because I already started painting these guys when I realized that maybe I should take photos of my painting progress and actually make some cheap shot videos out there for you guys. So that's the reason why I did that. I forgot to take the photos ahead of time because the idea just hadn't crossed my thought for whatever reason. So the first thing you need to do, of course, for all these miniatures with the Blood Secrator, the Mighty Lord of Corn, the Skull Grinder, as well as the Blood Warrior, First thing you do is, of course, you prime all the miniatures. I used a Kryla, I used a, a Rust-Oleum flat white primer. You can find that at your local Walmart. Runs about three dollars and ninety-nine cents. Unfortunately, they no longer stack uh, stock my very cheap color placed uh, flat white spray paint anymore. So I use this stuff. It runs three ninety-nine. Even then, still cheaper than most primers. And just give it a good once over for all the miniatures. So that way, you can get that nice base coat for all the paint to stick on. And then once that dried, I then sprayed all the miniatures with Cryo and Gold spray paint with a satin finish. That runs you three dollars and ninety-nine cents for that can as well. And the reason why I did this is because on these miniatures, there's a lot of scroll work on the armor. Anybody who's ever painted up Chaos Warriors knows exactly what I'm talking talking about uh, they have like a lot of runic symbols and arrows and spikes and stuff interwoven into their armor that edges the uh, edging of their armor and anybody who can tell you it's a real pain to paint those scroll work it looks beautiful once it's done but it's a real chore or to get that taken care of i found that the fastest way to take care of that is that you actually base spray the entire miniature and the color that you want to make the scroll work and then from there you fill in the gaps in the armor panels with another base paint layer in order to uh, make the color from the armor panels so because of that i wanted these guys to have gold um, um, scroll work on the armor so I spray painted the gold to make that you know go by really really quick once of course both the uh, primer as well as the gold paint has dried you're then ready to move on to the next further steps to start blocking out color or on the flesh all right, so that takes us directly to step three, which is a base coat for all the flesh, and then step four, which is a dry brush. For all the exposed flesh on these miniatures, I decided to go with your traditional kind of um, uh, flesh color paint job for the for the flesh on these guys. And the reason why is because, like I said before, I am doing a blackened uh, armor finish on these guys, so because of that, I do want the skin to contrast with the armor that they're wearing. So because of that, the very first thing I use is Apple Barrel Flesh Tone. Uh, it's made by Apple Barrel Paint, comes in a two ounce tube, runs you about 50 cents at your local Walmart, and I put two thin coats of flesh on all the exposed skin so things like the arms the necks as well as the hands um, some half of the faces are exposed so because I just did that real quick once I got done base coating all the flesh the next thing I did of course is do a dry brush real quick with Delta's serum coat peaches and cream it's a nice pale flesh color did a quick dry brush on all the exposed flesh and it brings up the details it catches the highlights and all the raised areas and leaves the flesh color in the uh, recesses so that's some three-dimensionality to your miniatures now I will warn you this dry brushing will have a chalk effect on your miniatures when you're done don't worry about that chalky effect you're not doing anything wrong because when we get to the final stage where we oil wash all of it that chalkiness will go away as it blends all the colors together and actually adds the uh, additional details with the oil wash but we'll talk about that when we get to that step so just a real quick base coat with the flesh as well as a dry brush for all the exposed skin 
All right, so step five is next is a base coat. So what you need to do now is paint all the parts of this miniature that's gonna be black, is what you're gonna have to do. Now this one is kind of a painstaking process, and the reason why is because what you have to do is take a five point paintbrush and then kind of go inside of all the nooks and crannies of where you want it to be black. Like I said, there's a lot of scroll work on these guys. So the parts that are golden, that's gonna be the scroll work, while the parts of the panel that are not gonna be uh, golden, I painted that with black. I use Pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs at 50 cents. It's a really great paint. They're actually are super dark gray is what it is but the best part about pavement actually has a slight texture to the paint which gives it kind of a rough finish which is perfect for dry brushing so that's exactly the reason why i love using this stuff so as you can see here i've actually painted all the blood warriors i actually split this process in two i first concentrate on the blood warriors and then i concentrate on the character models that i'm going to use for this unit so as you can see here all the armor panels between all the gaps of gold as well as their boots i painted up with two layers of pavement from apple barrel paint and on the next page as well as you can see, I did exactly the same thing for the Blood Secretor as well as for the Mighty Lord of Corn, as well as for the Skull Grinder as well. I picked out the parts that wanted to be black on the armor and put two thin coats of pavement on that to make that uh, really pop up. And right off the bat, whether you remember it or not, you've actually accomplished majority of the work that these miniatures were really gonna take. For the rest of the uh, actual video, it's just working on the finer details at this point. So that part's kind of nice. I just will warn you though, if you do make any mistakes while you're painting in the armor panels, like you do manage to get some of the gold, don't feel bad just get some cold paint real quick and just fix up as you need to so now that we're done with the base coat the next step for step number six is to do a dry brush as you can see i've done the same dry brush for all the miniatures in this unit i just did a dry brush with anita's acrylic gray paint uh, basically just put a light dry brush primarily focusing on the boots as well as large armor panels that don't have much scroll work on it uh, for the armor panels that did have a lot of or, uh, scroll work near it i just did a real faint dry brush so that way the dry brush doesn't spill over into the gold if it does go over into the gold scroll work don't stress out just get some gold pa uh, paint real quick and just kind of neaten up for the most part but as you can see there it just kind of brings out a little bit of more dynamicism on the boots especially the texture for the boots as well as bring a little bit of a, a bit of dry brush texturing for the armor as well especially when it comes to the face parts the uh, the facial masks the half masks that come on the helmets that part is really really important and of course, the very last step that we need to do for the black armor is another dry brush for step number seven. This time we use Granite Gray by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a very bright gray that's almost close to white. And for that one, we're gonna be very selective with the painting on that one. For that one, we didn't dry brush the armor or the boots for the most part. What we did is we dry brushed the masks and the helmets that these characters are wearing. Uh, these helmets and masks have like a skull motif going on and you wanna pick out that detail real quick. So just do a, a light dry brush with that Granite Gray. As you can see, you can find a focus it right there on the uh, Mighty Lord of Corn on his face. And that's exactly what you need to do as well. So just do a quick little light dry brush with it uh, on the masks so that way you can see some of the facial features on the armor. All right, so with that, we go to step number eight, which is another base coat. And this time we're picking out all the details that are gonna be red on these miniatures. So once again, there's a lot of red on these guys. Um, the way I painted up these guys, I decided to paint up the hel head, the crests on their helmets with a bright red color. And the reason why I wanna do that is to show that these guys are serving corn because corn is the, uh, you know, the god of blood and warfare. I also did exactly the same thing with that beautiful skull ruin on the top of the uh, standard there for the Blood Crater. I also picked up all the helmet crests and all the blood warriors. Did exactly the same thing with the shoulder pads as well as the helmet head crest, as well as the uh, anvil of the skull grinder. And I also did exactly the same thing with the uh, the crest right above the Mighty Lord of Corn's shoulders, as well as the flesh hound that he has on a chain that he's carrying around as well. And uh, I just basically did one thin layer of Renita's red, uh, true red acrylic paint on all the head crests and armor pieces. For the Bloodhound, however, uh, the flesh hound, however, I did two coats. And the reason why is because the flesh hound is going to be a, a red flesh creature because it's a demon. Now, the reason why I only put one layer of the true red on all the crests and the armor is because the nice thing about uh, craft paint, especially Anita's craft paint, is that it's very thin. It's a very thin paint. So the nice part about it is when you paint it over the gold that you've already sprayed on the miniatures, some of the gold will show through the red, but what it does, it gives it kind of like this metallic reddish chromed red color is what it ends up doing for the finish so you can see there it doesn't look quite red on these guys it looks like a metallic red which looks really really nice especially when you're painting over gold so if you want to create that crimson kind of metallic reddish color on armor this is the best technique on how to do it and it costs like pennies to make that happen anita's acrylic paint only costs you 65 cents and when you put on top of a gold layer it just looks really shimmery and really awesome and chromed out and it looks really really cool and that's all you really need to do for all the blood warriors the blood the crater, the skull grinder, as well as the mighty water corn. And on the next slide, next few slides, we're going to be concentrating primarily on the flesh hound that is with the mighty water corn. 
All right, so that takes us to step number nine, which is a dry brush. And like I said before, this part is gonna be, a couple slides are gonna be dedicated to the uh, flesh hound that's, uh, that the Mighty Lord of Corn is using as a pet. So once again, we've painted the miniature with uh, bright red, uh, true red by acrylic paint, uh, by Anita's acrylic paint. And the next thing we need to do now is do a layer of dry brushing. What I do is I first start off with a dry brush of flag red. It is kind of like a reddish orange color that's made by Apple Barrel Paint, runs about 50 cents per tube. I did a quick dry brush over the true red. So it kind of gives it kind of like this pastel -y kind of orangish red color to the, to the flesh. And then the next thing I do, of course, that I didn't take Tropic Orange by Apple Barrel Paint as well. It's a very pastel color, runs 50 cents as well and I did a light dry brush with that as well to, to bring up the musculature. What it does, it allows the true red to stay inside the recesses and it kind of creates this layered effect where you're starting to see this slow brightening of highlights on the flesh hounds of corn. And it looks really, really nice, especially when you add the oil wash to it later on when we get to that part. So once again, you start off with flag red first, then followed by tropic orange. You do a quick dry brush on the flesh hound and then you're pretty much done with the flesh on the uh, flesh hound. All right, so once you're done with the... Uh, uh, the flesh on the flesh down. The next thing you do, of course, is focus up on the uh, on the uh, the black spines that runs along the back of the creature as well. So I decided to use pavement for that. Of course, real simple. Just put two thin layers on the spines along the back of the uh, of the flesh hand of corn. Now you're probably wondering. Uh, Commander Chiefskate, why aren't you doing the claws for this thing? The reason why is because I'm going to pick up the claws on the talons on its feet uh, with uh, khakis because I want to have like a bone color for that guy. So because I skipped the uh, black on that, I just focused the black directly on the spines along the back of the flesh hound. All right, so for step number 12, what you need to do is a quick dry brush real quick. Once again, I'm using Anita's acrylic uh, gray, just doing a quick dry brush on the black uh, spines on the back of the flesh hound. Just do it once over real quick. Make sure you got a nice little even coat of uh, gray on there so that way you can pick out the details as well as the texturing on it and add some highlighting. And uh, that pretty much makes up the dry brush for this step. So now that you're done with the dry brushing, the next step is step number 13. It's another base coat. This time I'm using Holly Branch by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, bright Christmas green kind of color. And what I decided to concentrate with the green on this one was on the neck fin of the Flesh Hound, as well as some of the scales along the back, shoulders, as well as limbs of the Flesh Hound itself. Now the reason why I'm painting those in green is because I'm making my Flesh Hound resemble the classic Flesh Hound color technique that was used on Flesh Hounds of Corns back in the 1990s. I originally got into the game of Warhammer Fantasy Battle during 4th edition, and during the 4th edition, the Flesh Hounds had a red and green color scheme, so I decided to mimic that on this Flesh Hound as well. Plus, it also ties in with the other five Flesh Hounds I've already done for my Flesh Terrors unit that I've already painted ahead of time. So all I did, of course, is just do two thin layers of Holly Branch along the neck fin, and along the back and limbs and shoulders of the Flesh Hound, what I did was a technique called stippling. Stippling is where you take a flat brush real quick, that's kind of the tips kind of flattened. And what you do is you just dip into the color and instead of brushing it on, what you do is you stab the miniature with the tip of the brush to kind of create this dispersed pattern along the back of it to make it look like more organic as also more random as well. So I did that as well to make it look more organic. That way as you're stippling out from the center of the color that you want towards the to the periphery, to the edges, it actually fades down as a nice little gradient blend into the red. And that's exactly what I did for the outside of it. The two thin coats of the holly branch for on the neck fin as well as a stippling on the scales on the back and shoulder. So with that, we go on to step number 14 as well as step number 15. Step number 14 is a base coat. What I'd use, I'd use Sky Blue by Apple Barrel Paint to pick out the eyes on the Flesh Hound. So it has a nice glowing blue color. Uh, just put a little dot around the eye socket and around the edge of the eyes to make it look like it's glowing. And then this next step after that, of course, I did a dry brush with Apple Barrel's Lime Sherbet. And what I did is I did that on the stippling that I did on the back and shoulders. It was a leg, the base of the tail, as well as the neck fin as well. Lime Sherbet is a nice chalky, bright green color. It does a perfect job of bringing out textures and illustrating those highlights on this miniature. And as you can see, they've done exactly that all on the shoulders and the spines and stuff. Makes a nice, real contrasting color between the red as well as the green. Makes it really, really awesome as well. And uh, that's pretty much the step you take for the Flesh Hound on that one. So now we're done with the flesh. I move on to step number 16 and step number 16 once again is a base coat. This time you're picking out all the details that are in bone on these miniatures. So for example, a couple of the blood warriors, they have like what looks like bone jaws that represent the blades of their axes. They also have some skulls on them as well. Plenty of skulls around all these miniatures. Also, we pick out the fangs and claws and spine and then the, the blades on the tail of the flesh hound as well. So anything that you want to have painted in a bone color, you just put two thin uh, layers of khaki paint by Apple Barrel Paint in order to pick out 
those details. Now it's a little bit harder to see on this picture just because the gold and the khaki are very similar in tone, so it's a little bit hard to see. But right now, you won't really see the difference really until you do an oil wash, because then it really brings up the differences between the two different color tones. But that's all you need to do. Just do two, th two thin layers of khaki paint on all the bow materials, and then you're ready to go. Now at this point that we start working on the nice little uh, details on the miniatures now, we're getting close to the end of this. So for step number 16, 17, we use another base coat. This time, uh, four miniatures within the army actually have tufts of hair. Two of them have top knots, so you have like little the ponytails coming out the back of their heads, and the other two have beards coming down. And what I use, I use ripe tomato for that one. Ripe tomato is a nice bright orange color. I uh, put two thin layers on it. It's a nice color that clashes very nicely, complements very nicely with the black, so that way it kind of sticks out on its own, and also very bright in color as well. So that's the thing I did. Just put two thin coats rep to made on anything that wants to put any of the hair and the stuff like that to make it like a bright orangish color. So for step number 18, once again, we do base coating. This time we're doing all the details that are going to be in silver. In this case, I use gunmetal uh, metal gray by Folk Art. Runs about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And I just did one thin coat of uh, silver on all the silver accents. So on the blades of the weapons, on the chainmail that hangs off of these characters as well. Um, anything that I wanted to be silver, I just kind of picked it up real quick in my Blood Warriors. I did exactly the same thing with the Skull Grinder, as well as the Lord of Mighty Lord of Corn, as well as this uh, Blood Secretor as well. Just pick out all the details that you want to be silver on that part. Also, another thing I also picked out was the shoulder joints. Uh, not the shoulder joints, the uh, elbow joints. The elbow joints had these really cool uh, armored pads on their elbows. I painted those silver as well to add a little bit more contrast to that. Um, as for the knees, I left that nice gold color just because I thought the gold was really nice between the layers of black, so I just left that alone. But the thing that's silver on these guys, spikes, spines, whatever you want to make silver, just add a thin coat of gunmetal gray and that will definitely do the job. So with that over with, we went on to step number 19 with another base coat, this time of copper from Folk Art. And this time we focus on all the little details that we make we want to make a copperish color. So things like the haft of the weapons, for example. So like along the axes, you can see there, the part of the axes that are exposed. I painted those in copper to add some contrast to the metals. Same thing with the manacles that they're also wearing. A lot of these blood warriors have like handcuff manacles attached to their bodies. I'm not really sure what the significance of that is. But if we found them, we just picked those out in copper real quick. Made it look really, really awesome at the same time and just add those details to them as well. We did exactly the same thing with the uh, Lord of Corn as well as a Skull Grinder as well as the Blessed Crater as well and just picked out mainly weapon grips and just little details spread throughout the miniatures. There's also a lot of uh, skull runes, uh, icons, uh, hanging off these characters kind of like charms. Did exactly the same thing by adding a thin layer of copper on top of that to make it look really vibrant and to uh, stick out as well. And the last step that we do, of course, these miniatures is add some more additional detail work. Uh, this time we use Lime Sherbert. Uh, that's for step number 20 for base coat. Just put a little dot of Lime Sherbert in all the eye slots and all the helmets that they're wearing to make it look like their eyes are glowing a nice green color so that way it contrasts nicely against the black. At the same time, any cording as well as any uh, length of cable that we have on these characters, we also pick those out in Tahiti Blue. Uh, that's made by uh, Delta Serum Coat. Did two thin layers on that. So things like cording and wrapping around the weapons, around their wrists, around around uh, different cording that connects to armor joints, all these different things you picked out in nice Tahitian blue. The Tahitian blue is a nice color to use because it contrasts very nicely with the black and gold that these guys are rocking. And it also kind of adds a little bit of color to it. Like I said before, the problem with most corn legion armies is that they're very drab. They're just a bunch of red, black, and gold for the most part. So you want to add these little accent colors to kind of break up the monotony of your army and make it look really awesome and just really pop as well. And that's exactly what we did. And we did this exactly for the Blood Warriors. Same thing with the Mighty Lord of Corn, the Blood the crater as well as for the skull grinder as well and so now that you have all these details done the next step we need to do of course is now apply an oil wash all right, so step number 21 is an oil wash and then set aside to cure. So because this is a quick paint method, a lot of people like to use Army Painter Strong Tone in order to do the job. Army Painter Strong Tone is a wonderful product to use for this method. The only problem is it's expensive. It runs you $32 a can. Whereas a can of Midwax Poly Shade Mission Oak uh, does exactly the same thing and only costs $7. So it's about one-fifth the cost. So that's one of the things that I liked about that one. So all you need to do, of course, is apply your Midwax Poly Shade all over the miniatures. And as you can see, for the entirety of the unit uh, does a perfect job sweeping into the seeping into the crevices as well as the recesses of the uh, miniatures brings out a lot of the detail that was hidden before beneath the base coating as well as the dry brushing as well also does a really nice job of flattening the colors as well so the dry brushing that we did that had a really chalky after look on that one it kind of brought it down and muted a little bit and also the blend of the base coats also does a beautiful job bringing out the vibrancy and the reds and the black on these units as well and same thing with dying down the uh, uh, toning down the turquoise 
turquoise that we use for the Tahitian blue, as well as a lime sherbet for a lot of the details on it. Kind of blends and suppresses the colors nicely and also brings out a lot of details that we didn't see before uh, because we were dry brushing and painting, base paint counting for the most part. Like I said before, you should allow 24 hours for this stuff to dry as well as to cure. And the reason why is because you don't want to work with this stuff while it's still sticky or wet because you could remove layers of paint on accident if uh, you're not careful. So wait about 24 hours before you move on to the next step. All right, so that takes us to step 22, we're still step 23. Step 22 is a spray matte varnish on the entirety of the miniatures. Um, if you like the candy coated, bright, shiny look that is afterwards when the, when the polycrylic is uh, done drying and curing, uh, by all means, you can skip this part about spraying with matte finish. However, I like my miniatures to be subdued. I don't like that little sheen that you see on top of them. So because of that, I use some Cryoline matte finish. Runs about $5.99 at your local Walmart. Just do a nice once over the entire miniature. And as you can see, it brings out a lot of the details now. Now that the shine is gone off of the uh, polyacrylic, you could really see all the details, the texturing, the crevices, the recesses. You can see all the colors and everything else working very vibrant together. And these miniatures look absolutely awesome. Now, once you're done with the matte finisher course, the next thing you do is start working on the base. And once again, I'm making the same base materials I have for all my Corn Legion armies. I'm using two layers of pavement on all the bases to make it look like a really ashy, burnt out wasteland that these guys are crossing, uh, going across. So I do two thin layers of pavement so that way it blocks out all the color and also make sure that the gold doesn't shine through on the bases. Now that we're done with the basing on the, uh, the the base layers, next we need to do for steps number 24 and 25 is to do two series of dry brushes. The first series for step number 24 is using Anita's a gray acrylic, and just once again doing a once over real fast with that dry brush on the bases, just to add a little bit of mid-tone range to the uh, ashen wasteland they're rocking across. And the final last finishing touch, of course, is to use a nice dry brush of uh, granite gray by Apple Barrel Paint. And as you can see there, it brings out all that texturing and just does a really awesome job highlighting the ground that they're walking on. It looks like they're walking across an ashy ruin as well, so it looks really, really cool. Also, the nice thing about some of these miniatures, they also have some nice texturing on the miniatures as well for where they're standing. So you have like rocks and boulders and piles of skulls that these guys are walking on. So it looks really awesome at the same time. So you just do that quick dry brush real quick. And once you're done with that dry brush, now it's time to apply the gore effect. All right, so now we get to the really fun step, which is step number 25, adding the gore effect to these miniatures. We do not use blood for the blood god. What we use is a three to one ratio to make our gore paint that we call it, which is a ratio of three parts true red by Anita's acrylic with one part burnt umber. And then when we make up our mixture of gore paint, we then have a one to one ratio of the gore paint that we just made, as well as poly acrylic by Minwax, a clear gloss finish on this one. We mix the two together, makes a nice bright red bloody slime is what it basically makes when you make that combination a wonderful gore effect that just works awesome for the entire series of miniatures. And as you can see in this photo, we just went to town with the gore effect on these guys. Um, that's one of the fun things about playing a Legion of Corn Army is the amount of gore effect that you can add to it and make it look really cool. So things that we did, of course, we start from the bases. We put it on the corners and across the bases, making pools of blood and rivulets of blood to make it look like they're walking across a boggy, ashy ruin of blood and ash, which made it look really cool as well. We also put it along the heft of the weapons as well as the blades. and looks like the blood is dripping down the length of the weapon. We put them off on their like little shield buckler things that they're carrying and made it look like you know they punched somebody in the face at that and really gored that up as well we also put on the skull grinders mallet uh, the anvil that he has as well the maw and the claws of the uh, flesh hound we did all kinds of stuff with this gore effect and just added it all over the place also some of these miniatures actually have like mouths where their abdomens are located at for some of these blood warriors you make that come dribbling out of their stomachs it looks like their mouths and their stomachs are actually bitten to somebody also put a judicious amount of it on the skull icon on the blood secretor as well to make it look like the uh, skull icon from that standard bearer is actually bleeding red and that's all we do just add as much gore effect as you like and then once you're done you're pretty much uh, almost done with the last thing you need to do now is rim the bases and the very last step is step number 26. Once again, it's just a base coat, and this time we are using two layers of Skyline by Folk Art. That runs you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby is what it does. And all we did is, of course, just rim the bases with two thin layers of Skyline, so that way we have that nice grayish blue to clash with the blood and the gray, and all the different colors just kind of ties in the entire army all together, and it looks really awesome. It's a nice contrasting color to use for the bases on these miniatures, and at the same time, tie the entire army together. 
And as you can see, this is the final result. So this is with the Blood Warriors, the Blood Secretor, the Mighty Lord of Corn, as well as the Skull Grinder. This is what they all look together when it's all said and done, all finally put together as well. As you can see, these guys look absolutely fantastic. They look really bloody and messed up. They look like they're really gory, ready to do a lot of fighting. They got wonderful color schemes of that black and gold armor plating. It just looks really awesome and looks like it's ready to bring some pain onto the battlefields of the old world. So now that we're done painting up our Blood Warriors, as well as our Mighty Lord of Corn, our Blood the creator as well as skull grinder we're going to talk about the different costs associated with making this the first thing we do of course is what i call the citadel and army painter method we're going to show you exactly what materials you need to buy from citadel uh, by his games workshop as well as army painter in order to paint this min these miniatures using that method and show you the cost associated with that and then we're going to total the value and then show you the savings you would have if you use my cheapskate method in order to do it so that being said let's go ahead and start talking about the cost what it would take to paint up this unit all right, let's go ahead and talk about the Citadel and Army Painter method first. First of all, you'll need a primary miniatures and Corax white spray, which runs you $17, as well as then add another layer of Retributor armor spray, which runs you $28 in order to cover the entire miniatures in gold, so that way you can pick out that uh, that scroll work on the armor as well. After you buy those sprays, you'll next need to use Eschen Gray to do all the drive, uh, the Eschen Gray for all the pavement that we did for all the armor, as well as the boots and the leather and all that kind of stuff. For the flesh, you'll need to use Cadian Flesh Tone for the medium uh, flesh color for that. Uh, that runs you $4. 55 cents for Eschen Gray as well as uh, Cadian Flesh Tone. Now, for all the parts that are going to be khaki, which are the, all the bone pieces, you need to buy Morgas Brown Bone. Now, for the parts that are going to be Territorial Beige, you need to buy Baylor Brown. For the parts that are green, using the Holly Branch, you will need to use Caliban Green as well as Screamer Pink for all the colors for Light Magenta as well. At the same time, you also need Winter Green as well, which is Gauss Blaster Green, as well as Ultawan Gray for all the parts that are going to be a light gray as well. Now, for the parts that are going to be Umber for your Gore Effect, you need to buy a can of uh, a tub of Wildwood, which runs you seven dollars eighty cents for that one. Now, for the parts that are going to be orange for like the dry brushing, you'll need to buy Luganath Orange, as well as Wild Rider Red for all the parts you'll be uh, dry brushing in Flag Red, but we use for Flag Red. You also need Hellion Green in order to do the light highlighting on the green with the dry brushing, as well as using Blue Horror for all the sky blue that we use for this as well. And then also need Troll Slayer Orange in order to do the right tomato effect that we did. And once again. All those paints cost $4.55. Now, for the parts that you did in the Tahitian blue, so like for the weapon grips and the cording and stuff, you'll need to buy Baharoth blue. And for the highlighting on the flesh, you'll need to use Flay One Flesh uh, to do the highlighting on that as well. Now, the parts are just normal gray for like the bases and stuff. You'll need to use Slanesh gray. And for all the parts that we did in true red, you'll need to buy Mephiston red as well. And all those paints, of course, cost you $4.55 per tub. Now, for the metallics, for lead belcher, what you'll need for all the silver parts, that'll cost you $7. 80 cents there for the parts that are done in copper you'll need to purchase screaming bell which runs you four dollars 55 cents and then for the rims of the bases you'll need to buy rust gray which runs you four dollars 55 cents as well and then finally for the quick paint method you'll need to buy a can of army painter strong tone which runs you 32 dollars as well as a tub of blood for the blood god for all the gore effects which would be another four dollars 55 cents and if you decide to flatten the miniatures down with a matte varnish you'll need to buy munitorium varnish which runs you another 19 dollars 50 cents now now, assuming that you'd buy all these materials in order to paint up this unit, it grand you give you a grand total of two hundred and three dollars and ten cents if you were to buy everything on this list in order to create this unit the way we've done it on this channel. So once again, two hundred and three dollars. You could almost buy a Dark Uprising Necromunda box set for that amount of money for two hundred three dollars and ten cents, and that's what's going to cost you in order to paint this method if you were to use the Citadel and Army Painter method. So now what we're going to do now, of course, is show you the Cheapskate method and how much it would cost for you to paint it that way. All right, so this is my cheapskate method. These are the materials I use to paint up this unit as well. And this is assuming, of course, that you don't already own these paints to begin with if you decide just to go out and buy everything brand new to do this. So to do that, first of all, you need a can of Rustoleum Flat White Primer. Runs at $3.99 at your local Walmart. Same thing with Cryline Gold Spray Paint with Satin Finish that also runs at $3.99 as well to do the scroll work. Next, you'll need to buy Apple Barrels Pavement, Flesh, Khaki, Terrio Toyo Beige, Holly Branch, Light Magenta, Winter Green, Granite Gray, Burnt Umber, Tropic Orange, Flag Red, Lime Sherbet, Sky Blue, and Red Tomato. And all of those paints, uh, each of them cost 50 cents a tube. And we're talking about a two ounce tube, not that sorry little tub of, you know, Citadel paint that they give you for five bucks. So it's only a tenth of the cost. You get much more volume and does exactly the same stuff as the name brand things. These things are absolutely awesome for the price that they actually sell them for. And once again, we've talked about all the methods you would use in order to paint those miniatures with that. Now for the wrapping according, of course, you'll need to buy Delta Serum Coat 
Lucian Blue, and for the dry brushing on the flesh, you'll need to buy Delta Serum Coat Peaches and Cream. Those two tubes will run you about 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. Same thing with the gray that we use for the miniatures. I use Anita's Acrylic Gray, which runs you 65 cents, and Anita's Acrylic True Red for all the red portions of the uh, miniatures. Those are both run you 65 cents a piece at Hobby Lobby as well. Now for the metallics, you'll need to buy a tube of Folk Art Gunmetal Gray for the metallics for the silver, as well as Folk Art Copper for all the parts that you want to make it to a br uh, brassy copperish color. And those run you about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And for the rims of the bases, you only need to use Skyline in order to do that and that also costs another 75 cents as well now to do the quick paint method you'll need to buy a can of midwax poly shade acrylic uh, poly shade and the mission oak color that runs you six dollars and 99 cents for that and if you want to do the gore effects with the homemade gore effect we talked earlier you'll need to buy a can of midwax poly acrylic clear gloss finish for six dollars and 99 cents and of course if you wanted to add that matte varnish on it to make it uh, more subdued you'd need to buy a can of krylon matte varnish spray which runs you five dollars and 99 cents now assuming that you went out there and bought all these materials just to paint this unit by itself you're talking about a grand total investment of $39.80 so less than 40 bucks is what you're looking at in order to buy all the stuff you need to paint up the method that we did now when you compare the $39.80 that I paid in order to paint up my miniatures this way and you compare it to the Citadel Army Painter method which went to $203.10 when you subtract it to you're talking about a total savings of $163.30 being saved and you can buy a hell of a lot of miniatures for $163.30 or paintbrushes or cheap paint or better yet just don't spend it at all and save that money for something else take your family out to a really nice dinner or something so that's exactly the savings that we're talking about with the cheapskate method saving you over 163 dollars and 30 cents on that alone so that's how we go about quickly and cheaply painting up a unit of blood warriors as well as a mighty lord of corn a skull grinder as well as a blood crater now if once again ladies and gentlemen please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook and Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.